we present Tony Hancock, Bill Kerr, Sidney James, Andre Melly, and Kenneth Williams in... Hancock's Half Hour. Let's see now, I'll, I'll have middle and leg, please. A uh, little bit to the left, bit more, that's it. Middle and leg, ready? Wait a minute, just pat the wicket down. Right, play. How's that, LBW? Rubbish, it was two foot outside me stumps. Oh, no, no you weren't. You were dead in front, you're out. I am not having that. That ball pitched outside me off stump. I went to off drive it. It hit a bump and turned in on me. You were leg before wicket. How can I be leg before wicket when it hit me in the stomach? <laughs> How long do you think my legs are? <laughs> Oof. I'm not playing with you anymore. You never want to be out. Well, it's my bat. <laughs> I still say you're LBW. I wasn't just stupid, great idiot. <laughs> I was two feet outside me off stump. Now shut up before I ram my bat down your throat. <laughs> Perishing Australians. What do they know about cricket anyway? We taught you a lot how to play the game, that's all. Taught us, sir. We were bashing a ball about when the Prime Minister of Australia was a kangaroo. <laughs> now then. Who holds the ashes? Go on, go on. <laughs> yes, go on then. Who holds the ashes? Ah, we're just letting you have them temporary. Just to remind you what they look like. <laughs> well, the rough guess. If we win the toss and go in first, the only blokes on our team you will see will be the opening batsman. <laughs> Listen, when Ray Lindwell gets going, there'll be so many ducks in your side, they'll be waddling in and out. I can't stop here arguing with you all day. I must get down to the nets and have a quick knock-up. Well, what are you so keen to start practising for? Well, with the Aussies coming over, you never know. I mean, somebody's got to lead us to victory, so I'm perfecting my off-drive, just in case. <laughs> my name is well known in cricket circles. Googly Hancock. <laughs> they were referring to the way you walk. <laughs> they were referring to my speciality ball. The one that comes out the back of my hand, moves away with my arm, Pitches just outside the leg stump, turns in, rises, offers in mid-air, looks around, and nips in between his legs, they have to climb up the gasometer to get the middle stump back. Bob, how can you talk about making the England team? I've joined a new club, and they've made me captain. I've got a feeling I'm going to be bang on form this year. Wait till the centuries come rolling in. Lords won't be able to ignore me much longer. What is this new club? Look, we've got our first indoor net practice tonight. Why don't you come down and see for yourself how I shape? You know, Tony's better than I thought he was, Bill. He's been batting for over an hour now, and they haven't managed to get him out yet. No wonder they made him captain. Who else could they make captain? He's the only one on the team over 12 years old. <laughs> what right is he to play for a Saturday morning children's cinema 11? <laughs> this is just like him. Anything to put his batting average up. Listen to him lauding it over those kids. Now, come on, come on. Let's have some life in the bowling. You, the slow bowler. Get off and let the fast bowler have a go. Oh, I was a fast bowler when we started. <laughs> Well, you've only been bowling an hour. What's the matter with you? No stammer in the kids today. You'll be in the reserves next time. This is the reserves. Cheek, you told me you wanted me for the first team. No, you're not good enough. What do you mean, not good enough? I've been clouting that slow leg break bowler all over the place. She's my little sister. I don't care who she is. I hit her right up her length. Oh, uh, we're fed up with you being captain. You never let us have a bat. We only let you play because you showed us how to get in the pictures for nothing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Shut up. <laughs> if you want a bat, you've got to get me out first. We have got you out, but you cheat. Every time the stumps go down, you say, shut that door, it's drafty. <laughs> Oh, let someone else have a bat. No, I know me rights. I won the toss. We chunged up. Ching-chang-chola. Hick-hack-hock. 
My scissors cut your paper, my stone blunted your scissors, and my paper wrapped your stone. I know the rules. So don't let's have so much of it. Go on, bomb me a fast one. All right, but it's the last one. And watch it, it's going to be a fast one. <laughs> ah! <laughs> How's that? Eat before wicked. <laughs> Bill, Bill, he's out. He certainly is. Spark out. Oh. Oh. Wait, Bill, take the ball out of his mouth. <laughs> Help me carry him into the dressing room. Uh. Uh. Now, just you lay back and rest, Tony. Oh, stop fussing. I'll be all right. Only a little bump. It's nothing. You wait till that kid goes into bat, though. He'd better wear pads right up to his cap. That's all I've got to say. <laughs> Mr. Hancock? Yes, nurse? <laughs> There's a gentleman here to see you. Oh? Who is he? The chairman of the MCC. The MCC? Quick, straighten the bed covers. Put me cricket cap on. <laughs> Mike, would you show him in, please? The chairman of the MCC. Watch your fatty. <laughs> Tell me, how's the old bunch? Sid, come back later. I'm expecting the chairman of the MCC. Well, who do you think I am? Ellen of Troy? <laughs> well, believe me, it's more likely than chairman of the MCC. <laughs> well, I am chairman C. I got me tie right here to prove it. Look, and painted nudes holding cricket bats. <laughs> yes, very smart. But How did a man like you come to get into such an exclusive club like the MCC? I mean, what were the committee thinking of to allow it? They had no choice. I worked my way up. I started off as groundsman, pushing the heavy roller up and down. Well? Well, one by one, they all got in the way. <laughs> so, here I am in with a brand new committee. Edwardian Fred, light-fingered Louis, Spanish John, Ginger Tom. Oh, yes, it... yes. <laughs> All good eating and arrow men, them, aren't they? <laughs> well, we're going to have a few changes made soon, just to liven things up. Liven things up at Lord's? Yeah. We're going to have a tote put up behind the side screen at the nursery end, a few pin tables and fruit machines in the long room, and dog racing round the boundary during the lunch interval. <laughs> Still, that's our plans for the future. I'll tell you what I came around to see you about. I was watching you practising in the nets just now, and I was very impressed. Oh, that's very kind of you. I, I was just loosening up, you know. I... Well, you know, I thought you showed great promise. Yes, I suppose I did, really. <laughs> then I think with a bit of coaching, you might have a big future in the game. True. Why? Who knows if I... If I make the grade, I might make enough runs. I, I might even... I might... No, it's too much. I, I'm reaching for the stars. It, it could never be. What? I might even take Dennis Compton's place. Yes? On those air cream adverts. <laughs> Well, I don't see why not. Look, I'd like you to come down to Lord's next week and we'll give you a thorough workout in the nets, just to see how you shape up. Lord's? Me at Lord's, me lifelong ambition. I won't let you dance it. I'll bring me own bat. <laughs> it's a good one. It's got a trademark on it. Best Jaffers this side up. <laughs> oh, this is the chance I've been waiting for. Another name to be added to the immortal hatred. Hobbs, Ammon, Dutton and Anchor. <laughs> All right, then. I'll see you at Lord's first thing Monday morning. Morning, Sid. I'm here. So I see. When you're ready, make your way down to the nets and I'll send a few of the ground staff down to have a go with you. All right, then. I'll see you later. Well, don't be long. Now then. Excuse me, sir. Are you the new chairman of the MCC? Yeah, what can I do for you? Well, we'd like a spot of net practice, if possible. Yeah, there will only be a couple of hours. Then we thought we might have some tea in the pavilion, if you could call us when it's ready. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Who are you, lot? Well, I'm Colin Cowdery. Oh, I'm Frank Tyson. I'm Godfrey Evans. Colin Crout, Colin who? Cowdery. Frank Tyson and Godfrey Evans. Never heard of you. What do you do? 
We play cricket. Oh, do you? Yes, we thought you, being chairman of the MCC, you might have heard of us. Do me a favour, I never heard of the MCC till I found out how much you cop for being chairman. <laughs> All right, you can have a knockabout if you want. Cost you a nicker each. That's funny. Never had to pay here before. Well, I've never been chairman before. <laughs> Come on, dib up. But we've been practising for years without paying. Well, have you? I think I'd better send in a bill for some back rent. Why don't you keep quiet, Godfrey? Now look what you've done. Well, it wasn't my fault. Come on, three nicker or no practice? <laughs> oh, all right. Pay it, the gentleman, Godfrey. Why should I pay? Well, you were the last one to have a benefit. Well... <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. Well, you haven't spent it all, have you? Uh, no. Well, pay the gentleman three pounds, then. All right, there you are. Chop. I'll need another benefit if I go around with you too much longer. <laughs> if you want me, I'll be in my office. I've got to ring up the ITA and kid them that the BBC have offered me 10,000 nigger for the test match rights. Then I've got to ring up the BBC and kid them that the ITA have offered me 11,000. Have they really? No, but somebody's got to make the first move, haven't they? <laughs> well, I'll see you. Sit. Sit. I'm ready. I... Oh, he's gone. Never mind, I don't suppose it matters who I practice with. Any of the ground staff? Ah, <laughs> uh, those three over there will do. Good morning, lads. Good morning. You three new here? Well, well not exactly. <laughs> don't worry, there's no need to be frightened. <laughs> Sonny Lodge, you'll soon get used to it. Oh, we have been here before, you know. Ah, haven't we all? Haven't we all? <laughs> Up there in the two bobs. <laughs> Sixpenny cushion, a bottle of fizz and a sack full of sandwiches <laughs> You three been sent down here by Sid James? Uh, much like we have, yes mm. Yes, I thought so He said he'd uh, send somebody down to give me a workout Well, shall we begin? Which would you prefer to do, bat or, or bow? Oh, I don't mind Come see, come saw, to quote a foreign language <laughs> <laughs> What do you lads do best? Well, uh, I'm a batsman, Frank here bowls a bit, and Godfrey fancies his chance behind the wicket. Uh, and what do you specialise in? Well, the lots, you know. Oh. <laughs> Keep your eyes open, watch what I do, you might pick up a few chips. You know, <laughs> right. Well, I'll tell you what, just to start with, uh, it's Col Colin, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Yes, all right, Colin, you take the bat. <laughs> take the bat. Godfrey can keep wicket. Thank you. All right, mate. <laughs> Frank? Yeah, yeah. Right. I'll do the bowling, you oh, watch. Oh. Uh, I'll tell you what, notice how I hold the ball. All right. mm -hmm. With the fingers on the seam there, you see. Mm -hmm. Beautifully poised. Yeah. Watch carefully the position of my body at the moment of delivery. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, very important if you're ever going to be a good bowler. <laughs> That's right, let's start. Are you ready, Colin? Yep. I'll chuck a few easy ones down to start with. Give you a bit of confidence. <laughs> right, play. Wait, no, 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 wait, wait. Colin, Colin. <laughs> You're not holding the bat right. <laughs> I mean, just come, come here. I mean, it's, that's the first thing you have to learn how to hold your bat properly, you see. You've no idea. I haven't. No, you'll never get anywhere with a grip like that. More like a number eight iron, that is. <laughs> Let me show you. Now, left hand about here, right leg a little bent. That's it. <laughs> see the easy movement you've got. <laughs> Who taught you to hold a bat like that? Well, Hammond, uh, actually. Well, there you are. What does Joan Ammon know about cricket? <laughs> I don't want to offend you, sir, but I feel much more comfortable holding it in the way I'm used to. Very well. Very well. Be it on your own head. <laughs> Foolish youth. <laughs> hold it the wrong way if you want to. We'll see who's right. I'll bowl and off break to you. You won't get near it holding the bat like that. Right play! <laughs> six! He's hit it for six! You see, you wouldn't listen to me, would you? <laughs> if you'd held it like I said, you'd have got a twelve. <laughs> Here, let me have a go. I'll show you the right way to do it. Hey, you, Loft. 
the tall one, the bowler. He means you, Frank. Oh, well. Yeah, now look. Bowl me a quick one. Do your best. <laughs> bowl me a quick one. I'll show you the correct way to hit it. All right. I'll, I'll just measure up my run. All right, then. Takes a long run. <laughs> He's a bit quick, you know. Good, that's how I like him. All right. <laughs> Hello, here he comes. <laughs> out. What do you mean, out? Well, Frank caught the ball, Colin caught the bat, and I've caught the stumps. <laughs> Hello, Morrie. Sid James here. What odds Australia beat in England? Six to four, eh? Good. I'll have a thousand nicker on Australia. <laughs> Wasting me money. You forget, Morty, I'm chairman of the MCC. And one of my jobs is to pick the England team. And I've just had a very good idea. This is the BBC Light Programme. The time is half past eleven, and we now take you over to Lords, where John Harlot is waiting to give you a commentary on the opening overs of the test match between England and Australia. So over to John Harlot at Lords. And the commercial traveller asked if he could stop the night, you see, Rex. <laughs> so the farmer said, well, there's only me and my 18-year-old daughter here. And then this commercial traveller... <laughs> what? <laughs> Good morning to light programmers. <laughs> Good morning. Where the news is that England have won the toss on a magnificent batting wicket. Thousands of runs in it for the side that bats first. And Hancock, the new England skipper, has put Australia in. <laughs> the two umpires are out at the wicket now, and we're waiting for the England side to come onto the field. Ah, yes, here they come, down the pavilion steps, led by Hancock, playing his first test match. I can see Compton, Evans, Cowdery at the back there, Frank Tyson flexing his shoulders, and it's a shame that no one told Hancock that the England captain usually wears an England cap. <laughs> Look at all right in a David Crockett hat. <laughs> but, uh, the, the England team are waiting for the Australian opening batsman to come out, and I notice they're all crowding round Hancock, uh, taking some last minute advice from him, perhaps. Well, fancy daft thing, wasn't it? Putting Australia into battle, you can't blame me, lads. We've all got to stick together. <laughs> If we get one of them out by tomorrow night, we'll be doing well, I can tell you. It's tactics, tactics, that's what it is. Save it to me, we'll get them out. <laughs> Who's opening the bowling, Skipper? Frank Tyson? Oh, no. Who, then? Me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I might as well go home for a start. <laughs> you stay behind the wicket, Godfrey. Now, come on, lads, rally round. Here come the Aussie openers. Right, lads, positions. <whistles> I'm bowling. <laughs> How do you want your field play, Skipper? I don't mind, Colin, lads. Where would you like to go? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> now, stop in there. Now, field positions. Two short legs, a couple of slips. What else is there? Uh... Oh, look, never mind. Tell them to spread out, but keep within chatting distance of each other. That'll do. Hancock's finished setting his rather unusual field. It consists of himself bowling from the pavilion end. Uh, Evans, the wicketkeeper, standing back. Rather an unusual stance. I, I see he's reading. Uh, <laughs> and then the other nine are strung out round the boundary talking to the crowd. Now that's the scene here at Lord's as Hancock hands the umpire his Davy Crockett hat. And he's preparing now to bowl the first over of the day to Colin MacDonald, the Australian number one. He measures out his run, six paces. Turns, she's Mark, starts his run up to the wicket, he bowls, and the ball pitches just outside the off stump at the bowler's end. I <laughs> thought so. 
The umpire signaled a no ball. Now uh, Hancock gathers up the ball, walks back to his mark. Hancock to McDonald, in he bowls, and McDonald goes right down the wicket to this one. Had to, otherwise it wouldn't have reached him. <laughs> Another no ball. Now Hancock's ordered his field to spread out more. Several of them have climbed over the rails and then bring them to the crowd. <laughs> Hancock to McDonald once again now, and this time. <laughs> Now, one o'clock, and we're taking you back to Lords to hear more news of the test match from John Arland. And here at Lords, with half an hour to go to lunch, we've been playing for just over one and a half hours, and Hancock hasn't yet finished the first over. <laughs> the Australian score, including 93 no balls, is 422 for no wicket. It's Hancock yet again to McDonald. He moves in, bowls, and this one's beaten McDonald on the sixth bounce, and it's wrapped him on the pad. <laughs> The umpire's thinking it over, taking his time over his decision, carefully studying the position of MacDonald's left leg. This could turn the tide for England if he's given out. The umpire straightens up, turns to Hancock. I don't know, I wasn't looking. <laughs> but you should have been looking, you're the umpire. <laughs> Oh, it wasn't my fault. It's all these, all these uh, sweaters tied round me neck. I can't see what's happening. Well, take them off and give them back to the players. They're not theirs, they're mine. <laughs> it's Parky standing here with nothing to do. Well, come on, hurry up and get on with it. I want my lunch. All right, how many balls have I got left? No, I don't know. What do you mean you... <laughs> What do you mean you don't know? Well, I've lost me pebbles. I've got nothing to count them with. <laughs> well, use your fingers. I can't. They're stuck in me toffee bag. <laughs> oh, go on. Hurry up. Start bowling again. I want to change sides. I want to bowl round the wicket. No, no. Stop missing the bell. <laughs> I've got a perfect right to change if I want to. You're an half rotten. <laughs> Just when I got nice and comfortable, I'll have to move me chair now. You're not supposed to have a chair. Well, I'm not standing up all day. I've got bad feet. Now, come on, bowl a ball. I'm getting fed up with you. Oh, all right then. I'll move back a bit. Now, what are you doing? What are you signaling buys for? I haven't bowled the thing yet. I'm not singing bars. I've got an itch. <laughs> Never wear wool next to the skin. It irritates. <laughs> That's better. Stop scratching. They put six more runs up on the board already. <laughs> now, concentrate. I'm going to bowl another ball. Now, watch carefully this time. Any more of that and I'll send you off the field. <laughs> What's the matter now? You destructive little devil. <laughs> you deliberately knocked those three little bits of wood down. <laughs> oh, yes, you did. Oh, yes. Well. I was watching you. <laughs> yeah, you've been aiming at them all morning. <laughs> yeah. But that's the idea of the game. Is he? Yeah. <laughs> now, listen. Eleven men come out on the field and two men go into bat and we have to bowl the ball at these men and they have to hit it and stop it from knocking all their little bits of wood over. And then, when we've knocked all their little bits of wood over, we change round and they have to knock all our little bits of wood over. And we do it for six hours a day for five days. It's a bit daft, isn't it? <laughs> Yes. Yes, it is when you come to think of it. Excuse me, Skipper. Skipper, yes. Oh. <laughs> what is it, Cowdery? <laughs> Godfrey Evans, uh, Godfrey wants to know if he can leave the field. Why? Well, he wants to pop down to the library and get another book out. <laughs> oh, well, it's lunchtime anyway. Come on, let's go and eat. I'll, 
I'll finish me over after lunch. Good afternoon to you once again from Lord's. The match here now is in the fifth day, and it looks like having a very exciting finish. <coughs> For those listeners who've only just tuned in, the position is this. Australia declared their first innings closed at 738 for one wicket. The English bowling analysis, Hancock, one over, one for 738. <laughs> no one else bowled. England then went into bat and were all out for two in 23 minutes. All the team except Hancock were run out. Each time he called for a short single, he fell over before he got started. <laughs> Australia went in again, scored a quick hundred, declared, and left England 837 runs to win. They made a wonderful fight of it. They made 835 of the runs by a very simple piece of strategy. They've locked Hancock up in the cloakroom. <laughs> so it's Lindwall now coming in to bowl to Bailey. And he's bowling. Well, there it is. England, 835 for nine wickets. And everything depends on the last man in, Hancock. Two runs to win with Godfrey Evans still there and only Hancock to come. And here comes England's captain. Think someone should have told him that the other batsmen are wearing two pads. England's last hope. Now, can he do it? Godfrey Evans is just walking over to have a few words with him and to tell him what the ball's doing, I fancy. Who let you out the cloakroom? <laughs> two to win, eh? All right, then, ball. All right, Ray. All right, then, ball. Come on. Bowl your fastest. I can handle anything you get a serve up. Right you are, matey. Here she comes. Good. <laughs> Pass your like, send it... I've forgotten me bat! <laughs> Linwall bowls to Hancock. It's a short one, a bumper, but Hancock's played it. A beautiful leg glide with the tip of his right ear. It's four runs <laughs> all the way. No one can stop that. England have won. Hancock has done it. Me head. Oh, the pain. Oh, me head. Oh, doctor, quickly. I think he's coming round. I did it. We won. I made the winning hit. A boundary off me right here. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute. Where am I? You're in hospital. Don't you remember? That little boy hit you on the head with a cricket ball this morning. Little boy? That was limbo. You've been unconscious for three hours. I think you've been dreaming. And I didn't, Captain England? I didn't make the winning hit. No, I'm afraid not, Tony. But never mind. You're still <coughs> captain of the Saturday morning cinema team. And the doctor says he'll have you fit and well in time for the start of the cricket season. Won't you, doctor? Well, you'll be here for another four weeks, but I'll do my best. <laughs> oh, no. Not him. That's it. That's me not. I'm not sitting here looking at him all day long. Andre, pass me the stone hot water bottle. Tony, what are you going to do? Hit myself over the head again. <laughs> Where's my skirt? I'm going to try for the English ladies team this time. <laughs> Good night. Uh -oh. I don't think he's done the right thing there. I don't think he's going to enjoy that dream. Well, why not? My sister's the umpire. <laughs> this has been the last programme of the current series of Hancock's Half Hour, starring Tony Hancock with Bill Kerr, Sidney James, Andre Melly and Kenneth Williams. In this edition, you also heard John Arlott, Godfrey Evans, Colin Cowdery and Frank Tyson. Incidental music was composed and orchestrated by Wally Stott, played by the BBC Augmented Review Orchestra, conducted by Harry Rabinowitz. The show, which was recorded, was written by Ray Galton and Alan Simpson and produced by Dennis Bain Wilson. <laughs> <laughs>